Hey, Nadine, thanks for joining us today as a way to get us started. Give us a little background on yourself. Yeah, no problem, Pat. Thanks for having me. Um, so I come from a, a pretty, pretty solid background of customer experience, customer service. That is my world. Um, at Bunzel, I am the Bunzel safety manager for customer service. Um, so I look at all of Canada for safety and really looking at what our customers are doing and how we can make that experience a good one for them. I love the the fact that you're so enthusiastic about this and passionate because customer service isn't the easiest thing, right? No, it is not. What no. drew what drew you into customer service? Uh, to be honest, I've done I've done a lot of different things in my career. You know, I I've gone to various different positions. You know, business side, sales side, and the one thing that I found I was always drawn to in every position was the customer. Um, at the end of the day, the customer is our world at every area. We should always be, you know, focused on the customer. So I figured why not go head first and talk to them directly? Absolutely. And how long have you been in, um, uh, customer service? Oh boy. Um, I, my entire career has pretty much been customer service. Um, I started a little bit on the retail side when I was really young, um, and then went into all various forms of it uh, throughout my career, I would probably say since uh, at least 20 plus years in customer service. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You like the punishment, right? I do. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just to take the audience back a couple of weeks so they understand what's going on. Typically, when we do the Bunzel Sales Nation podcast, is about sales, but customer service is so much now linked to sales. It always has, but now it's been more exposed just because coming out of the pandemic, I think there's been more of an emphasis on better customer service. We at Bunzel have found that it's so important we developed this course, this Excellence in Customer Service workshop that you actually took a few weeks ago, and it came about right around the pandemic, right before the pandemic, we actually offered the course and it's become one of our most popular. So for the audience sake, so they can understand better, what were some of your takeaways from the customer service excellence workshop? First of all, I thought it was phenomenally done. Um, it really starts to pinpoint the difference between customer service and customer excellence. Right? right? It's teaching you how to connect with the customer. Um, and instead of just hearing them, listening to them, finding out really what their concerns are, what their problems are. Sometimes, you know, the surface is what's, what's bothered them, what's, what's caused them to call in. But as you explore that and you start to ask those questions and dive deep with the customer, you start to realize there's probably something else that we can solution, that we can make better as a whole for that customer. Um, and I think that that training session really gave a spotlight to listening to that customer, acknowledging how they're feeling and figuring out where that root cause is, right? So we can actually build a trusted partnership with our customer. So that for me was super critical. Yeah. And the point you just made, that's all the, the course is all about that. And we'll talk about that in a second, about the certain aspects you're talking about, the things you highlight, you know, the customer building relationship, how does that work and how to acknowledge the customer when they have their issue and concern. A lot of times we blow by that. I'm looking at a statistic. I just looked at this point. I like getting new statistics about customer service. And it said three important qualities that people, us, you know, when we're done with the day and we have to go and buy something. We want our customer service to look like, you know, our person to be professional, show some empathy, right? Empathy, meaning, you know, the patience portion of everything. And also people first having that attitude. I think today we miss that and people first attitude is most important. Do you think you agree with that? Do you think those three attributes are something we need to dive in on all the time? 100%. Um, you know, one of the things that I talk to my team about, and I, I practice as best as possible with not just the customer, but internal customers, it works, it works for everything. It goes, it goes so deep in everything that you do in business, um, is 
that customer or that person you're talking to is a live person. They are listening to you and they want to feel engaged. They want to feel like they're on that journey with you. So some of the things I notice quite frequently is, you know, sometimes we get into the, what I call transactional mentality, right? Let me just get in there and type and figure out what's going on. And you're seeing all these wonderful things on your computer. The customer doesn't see that. The customer's hearing silence a lot of the time. Um, So one of the things that I really think is important to engage that customer is to take them on that journey with you. Let them know, constantly touch with them to say, hey, I'm looking up this, give me a few moments. Um, you know, it's it's called a lot of different things. I think uh, narration is, is definitely one of them, but right. um, it's so valuable. It goes a long way with building a rapport with your customer so they don't feel disconnected from you at any point. Yeah. One of the, one of the things I, when, uh, for the audience sake, we, uh, when we have this workshop, we have the customer service agents that are attending, we have breakout rooms and we do one-on-ones with them, with their teammates, also their cohorts doing a role play. One of the things that caught my attention immediately, because you happened to be in my breakout room was that when I threw you my, my objection, my concern as a customer, you took me through a narrative. And that's what caught my attention. Not every person I'm on the phone with outside of work, when I actually call into someone where I need customer service, will do take you on that journey. Explain a little bit more about that journey. When somebody says, hey, Nadine, your, your, your driver came in here. He was upset. He was in a really bad mood. And I'm really upset with Bunzel right now. Yes. Um, so... Traditionally, you know, you empathize, you listen to the customer, but one of the things you constantly do, you know, is as you're doing that, getting that customer's information, telling them you're pulling it up. Hey, you know what? I'm pulling up your account right now. Thanks for giving me that account number. Um, And really telling them, hey, I'm seeing here. This is the statuses. This is what I'm looking at right now. Um, Checking in with them saying, does your experience match what I'm seeing? Um, a lot of the times, yes. you know, customers don't understand that what we're seeing and what we're quoting to them doesn't necessarily match what they're feeling and what they're seeing live. Um, and one of the things I tell tell my reps, tell everybody is, it's really important to check that what you're explaining to the customer is relative to what they're experiencing. And that's why I really try to narrate what I see back to the customer, take them with me to make sure that all my checkpoints are lining up with what their, what their needs are. So that's why I, I tend to do that quite a bit. You do an excellent job of that. And that's what really, like I said, the, the journey. And that's important because one of the pet peeves, and I, I learned this and I bring this all the time in the workshop is that nobody think about yourself put yourself in their shoes right just like you're saying do you want to hear those famous words i have to put you on hold and you're thinking oh my god don't do that because you're going to throw me in this chasm and i'm never going to see you again when you narrated to me hey listen i'm going to put you on hold i'm going to go out to the warehouse i'm going to talk to the warehouse supervisor and say hey listen we have an issue with the driver i want to gather some information so this doesn't happen again If I'm not back here in three minutes, I promise I'll be back. I'll check in with you. Those are things that make, that separate you. Because what do we teach? We we, we mentioned this on the first day. We want to be able to separate Nadine or your staff or anybody from everybody else that's doing this, right? You started off as customer service. And I wanted to mention that you transitioned into leadership, customer service leader now. What were some of the challenges that you faced? Knowing what you know, you know, where you started and what you had to show others, how would you translate that to them? Um, I spend a lot of time kind of also talking to my team. My team is my customer. Um, and I find out where, where their strengths are and where they struggle. Um, and one of the things that I, I, I constantly do is... I actually relate to them and and confirm that I know where their their issues are. And I I impart as much information as I can to try to help them. I do 
also, um, similar to you, Pat, like what we experienced, I do a lot of role plays. Role plays right. helps them to actually solidify the information. So very similar to a customer, you want to take them on a journey. It's a lot easier for people to learn new skills and, and adapt new processes if you take them on it with them or right. with you on, on a live experience, right? So I definitely use a lot of role plays, a lot of scenarios, um, and really get them to share their thoughts and perspectives. Yes. And how how has the response been to role playing? How is how is your staff like that? Or are they timid? Um, to be honest with you, at first it it was a bit nerve-wracking. It's different. It was different for them. Um, they weren't quite sure what to make of it, right? right. Wait, right. you're asking me what I think. You're asking me to go through this and pretend you're a customer. Things like that are a little strange. Um, now they're used to it. They they have no issues. They enjoy it, actually, because most of the feedback and most of the learning and growth that they experience is from themselves. Right. It's from right. them digging deep, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that I learned very quickly, Karu is the one that, as you know, you met some of the partners or facilitators, Shar and also Kashina, very, very yeah. professional in what they do. And they bring some different looks into the whole customer service because, you know, outside of sales, when we're in sales, they're in sales, they have to deal with customers. So they bring a, a different type of look into what they experience and that translated into what you saw during the workshop. Mm -hmm. We talked about the different, one of the areas that Karu focuses in on, which was very important, was the different personalities of people that you meet. And when I took the sales course and then I also facilitated the customer service, I figured out that, geez, knowing the customers, what we called personas, if you remember that there were four yes. different types of personas, not stereotypes, but we get four different types of customers that security you know, customer that wants you to make them feel cozy and comfy. They don't like, you know, confrontations. They just want to know that my product is missing. I want it in. Then you have the affiliation type customer that wants to be friends with you. And you have customers like that. They want to, you know, hear about your families, and but you want to get down to business and solve their problems. Then you get that power personality, the one that's really dominating, really wants to take over the conversation. What did, you know, hey, Nadine, what can you do for me? other than just tell me what you can't do, right? And then the actualizer. And the actualizer is a blend of all three of those personalities. And that's where I think a lot of you, your traits came out because you understand honesty, you understand being empathetic with customers, right? I mean, did you did you learn the same out of that? Oh, 100%. Um, and one of the things, because I, I had some of my reps in there because I, I wanted them to experience this. I wanted them to go through it. Um, and one of the first things we did after was talk about who are you, right? Which one are you? Um, and it's funny, Pat, you a hundred percent, you've got me nailed that that's exactly who I am. I'm the partner. I'm the blend. I, I want, you know, everything to, to go well and, and really focus on how to fix it, how to solve it permanently together. Um, but it, you know, one of the things I told the team is, or, or the people that were in there is knowing who you are and your persona also helps you to understand your customer's persona and how you may need to work with them a little bit differently to, to overcome your own. Um, so I, I found that super valuable. Um, and it's funny, we talk about it regularly. I actually had one of the reps call me and say, Oh, I had one of those power people on the phone. <laughs> Oh, um, yes. which is great. That's wonderful right. to hear that they're using it daily too. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. When you, when you go through workshops, we don't want to change your personalities. We want you to uh, you know adopt and adapt that to your everyday style. It was great to hear when, you know, this was a, a week long course to hear that most of you start to implement some of the methodology into your day-to-day -day routine as being in the customer service area. What do you, what do you find difficult in your job, Nadine, when you're talking, not only with customers, maybe with other, you know, with your, your, your team or even with customers, what do you find to be really hard? Oh boy. Um, customer, Besides everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I have a little bit of a different take on it. 
um, you know, customers aren't calling you to tell you how wonderful you are. Right. Um, you know, right? that's, yeah. that's kind of, it comes part with the course to say, you know, you're in customer service, you're expecting to hear unhappy people. Um, that's, that's who, who calls you. Um, I don't find that difficult. I think where I, the most difficult and challenging part is figuring out how to get that customer who's in a mud puddle, who's grumpy to turn around and be happy and have a positive experience and drive that, you know, feeling of, Hey, maybe I don't particularly care for Bunzel to, wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be with them always drive a loyalty. And for me, that's, that's hard. That's, that's something that, you know, I try to instill in my team. I try to instill it in myself, every conversation, um, internal and external. I want people to be like, wow, I really, you know, I can buy a service anywhere, but I can't get Nadine anywhere. Um, And I want that for all of my team members. So that's kind of where I spend a lot of time is changing that about the business only to about how do we build that loyalty and relationship. Now, how did you acquire that skill. I know you said you've been doing this quite a few years, but when did you have the epiphany that this doesn't work, this is going to work? It was a lot of trial and error. Um, right. Not always great. Um, but I have to say it was when I did a lot of customer satisfaction surveys and I started to hear what was really truly important to customers. Right. Um, Everybody thinks it's price or it's this or it's, you know, all these different variables, you know, deliveries, things like that. And what I started to realize is the sentiment was really people. I want service. I want someone I can rely on and call and talk to who gets me, who understands it and who feels the pressures as much as I do. Um, And ever since then, it just swayed my mentality of, you know, there's so many things to focus on for all those other areas, but let's focus on the people, right? That's truly customer experience. Focus on the people, focus on making their experience a unique, genuine one. Right. Yes, exactly. I love the point you brought up the moments of truth. And I want to go directly to the moments of truth concept. We talked about this again. And for the audience's sake is that the concept is basic. Every one of us in this organization, from our drivers to our customer service to our salespeople, even our office staff, operations, uh, accounts payable, these are all people that are in contact with our customers. They may not know it or feel it every day, but it's true. The moments of truth concept is that when anybody within your organization has contact with a customer, there are three things that can, can happen. They can either have a positive contact experience, a neutral one, which is, you know, hey, you got, you know, I expect you to solve my problem. You solve my problem. Hey, we're good to go. Yep. Or a negative experience. And everything that we teach and we talked about, especially with you guys who are very seasoned, very seasoned group, was that positive contact comes first, right? And then you have the engagement with the customer. What do you, what did you call me? What's your concern? How can I fix your problem? And it could be, like you said, they could be in a mud puddle that day. They could be really irate. They could be kind of happy, but they're not calling you typically because they want to say, hey, Nadine, you got a great company. I love you guys. Dad, I just thought, you know, I'd call you for that. Or you can leave it with a negative, you know, experience. So what you're saying is that take every opportunity you can to bring it from, you know, positive contact and close the conversation, no matter how muddy it got in the middle to, you know, leave them with a positive experience with, with the organization. Is that pretty, pretty much? Bang on. That's exactly it. Yeah. And it doesn't happen all the time, right? Yeah. It doesn't. Um, and, you know, one of the important things is you may not always be able to give the customer everything they want, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that the outcome has to be negative because you can't give them what they want. 
there's ways to solution it where there's a happy medium or there's an understanding um, and creating that relationship of, hey, we got somewhere. May not have been everything I wanted, but we met in the middle and we both got what we needed to to accomplish it. Um, and I think sometimes people fixate or, or, or not necessarily fixate, they, they back away and think, well, if I can't give the customer everything in the sun, then I can't have a positive outcome. And I like to try to encourage people that you can, you can. Um, might take a little bit longer, might be, be a little bit more rocky in the middle, right. but we can get there. Yeah, with just a little bit of work, right? Just, just a little, a little bit. bit of work. I was looking at another statistic before we jumped on the call that 75% of customers desire a consistent relationship or consistent conversation with a customer service agent. Where do you find consistency? How do you teach consistency to your, to your team? That's a great, great question. Um, and it comes up quite frequently. Um, when, they, when they're talking consistent, they want, you know, what I feel or what I see in most customers is every individual is going to have their own flair. They're going to have their own way of talking to people and handling situations. Um, but they're looking for a consistent feel with a company, right? If I call, you know, one person to the other person, there's going to be a flow. There's going to be an urgency. There's going to be, you know, that empathy. I'm going to hear it from everybody and get a consistent interaction with a company. Right. Outcomes are always going to be different, right? You can never give the same outcome on every call. Um, and, you know, every customer needs to be treated as if it's their first time. It's, it's, they're talking right. to somebody, right? It's each interaction, but if they have a same feel, a same method, a same repeatable experience, that's what makes it. That's what brings it together for a customer. Right, right. I love the point. Uh, the only consistency you have in, in a customer service call is in consistency. You really do because every call is different. Everyone is unique. And that's where you have to, you have to understand that. And people can sense when you when they, when you pick up the phone, especially you can sense if they're in a mud puddle that day, they're upset about something you can know right away, just by the tone, the pitch, the rate they're speaking in. Oh, yeah. But the same for customer service, right? You have to smile. I mean, here's the disadvantage. You don't get to look at the, you know, your customer in the eyes. You can't read their body language. You can only listen and use your ears to get that conversation going. So you have to, on um, you know, think of me, if I'm a customer calling in, I want to make sure my customer service agent is going to be, you know, not only empathetic, but, you know, upbeat, positive, because if you start off in a negative tone, you're not going to go much in that conversation. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the things as I, I started down the path of customer experience and voice of customer, um, you're hundred percent right. Right. When we talk about, you know, relationship building one of the biggest pieces of a relationship between humans is body language right um and it takes up about 68 percent of communication and you're you're stripping that right off the bat when you start calling or emailing um and a lot of people forget especially in an email right that on the other end if that person's in a mud puddle they're going to interpret your language very different than you're intending it um, yeah, absolutely. So, oh, hundred percent. So your word choices and how you, how you speak and how you portray yourself written verbally, it's so important. Your words become so much more critical. Um, how you say things become really important. Um, and it's funny you say smile. Um, in my last, uh, company I worked in, we actually had mirrors on everybody's computers, little mirrors that stuck in. And you were to look at yourself and we always called it smile while you dial. Um, <laughs> right. Right. Because it, it, there is a fact that even though you're smiling and you don't think it means anything, it is incredible. The difference that it comes out on the other end. 
Absolutely. They hear it. It sounds different. It sounds, it sounds engaging. It sounds excitable. Yeah. Even when you're not feeling it. Right. 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 So. And the customer, customers do feel that they do feel and they, and they know when you're not being sincere or you're not being empathetic or you're just being fake. They, they pick you off. We, we teach that in sales all the time. The customers will read you and say, oh boy, this person's not even paying attention, which means, and it brings me to my, my, my next methodology that we talked about was the layer, listen, acknowledge, right? Explore and mm -hmm. respond. And I'm just going to hit on two things real quick. You know, anytime a call comes in, the customer says, Hey, listen, they're, they're calling in. Here's my problem. I, you know, was shorted, you know, 10 items on my load. I'm very upset. Right. A lot of times. And were you and be honest with you, were you amazed when we started doing some of the role play, you guys do this every day. And we had a seasoned group of, of very professional customer service agents yeah. in our workshop. Right. But we tended to miss the empathetic portion of it. Like, Oh, wow. I'm sorry that that's acknowledged portion. You listened and you acknowledge a, I understand that this is your problem. This is your concern. A lot of times we blow by that and we go directly into what command language. Give me your name. Give me your invoice number. Give me the store number, blah, blah, blah. Did you find that to be eye opening to you that a lot of times we blow by that? It was, it was, um, I found, you know, and it go it goes to the expertise of those seasoned individuals, right? They have a goal. They want to get that customer resolved. They want to diffuse right. the situation, and they're they're going headfirst into it. Um, and that's that's I call it kind of a booby trap for customer service um, because one of the first things you want to do is just solve that problem for that customer. Get get them get them out of the 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 mud puddle that they're in by just giving them an answer. Right. And a lot of the times you lose that human element, you lose that relationship. Um, and in turn, the customer, because the customer, there's so much more built into that person and how they're feeling. And a lot of the times how they're feeling is more important than the problem. Right. Um, right. For them at that moment and addressing that feeling as a human allows you to clear a path to get to explore the problem and solve the problem. Um, Cause a lot of times what you hear in that first 30 seconds of explosion um, or, or, you know, whatever comes <laughs> right. out of their mouth is more emotion and more frustration than it is an actual problem. They're just right. frustrated. Right. right. Um, so I, I was surprised that we blew by it, but not shocked. It happens quite often. Right, right. But, um, bringing it to the surface was really good. I right. really enjoyed that. And yeah, it's great because you don't, you subconsciously, you don't know you're really doing it. You're just, because here's what the number one return answer on that is when you say, hey, listen, why do you think the customer service agents do that? You know, they just kind of go by that. Well, number one, I don't want to bring up their bad situation again. I don't want to remind them they just had a bad experience. But when you hit it head on, say, listen, I understand. I don't want this to happen again. So I need to get some information out of you. Is that okay? And then you start going into your, your, you know, your explorer step, right? Get to the discovery, what's going on here. But we are fixers, whether it's sales or customer service, we are fixers. And that's what our job is because we want to get to the root of the problem. But when we don't explore deep enough on the situation, maybe we're our biases, our our you know odds are we call it right. We get into our own mindset because we just want to solve the problem, right? Yeah, yeah. So and it, you know to that point too. Sometimes we can fall into like you said our own odds are, which is, oh, I've heard this a million times before. All I have to do is this, and just that's going to solve the problem because it's done it. 20 times before. Right. Um, and that's not always the case, right? Yes. Um, and sometimes you go into solutioning and you think everything is good, but at the end of the day, the customer's like, but I know this problem is solved, but I don't feel any better about the situation because I know it's just going to happen again. They lose right. confidence, right? Um, so it's, it, it, for me, it's very important 
that you take that time, you take the few moments to acknowledge the feeling so that you can get to the actual root cause problem. Right. Yeah. So important, isn't it? If you had any last comments for the audience, anything that you've learned over the years, that one golden nugget, what might that be? My always be truthful and transparent to your customer Um, and be true to yourself. Um, If you know you don't know something, be honest with them. Take them on the journey, get the resolution for them. And surprisingly, the customer never expects you to know everything. They don't. They expect you to help them and work with them to get it right. Um, Sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves to know everything or not be transparent about it. Um, And I think that, that I always used to try to just, you know, be perfect, tell the customer everything, know everything. Um, And I found along the way, it's more important for them to know and trust that you will get me where I need to go. You may not know everything up front. You may not be able to answer everything in 10 seconds, but by the end of the call, I'm going to have what I need. And that to me was huge. It was a huge realization to me that that's how you end in that positive partnership relationship with your customer. Yeah. Those are true words of wisdom. Those are your, uh, and I think everybody else's, you know, moments of truth, right? That's exactly right. Great conversation, Nadine. Fantastic. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and and tell us about your experiences in customer service and even as a leader as well. How do people uh, connect or follow you if they want to get a hold of you? Um, I am happy to to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. I'm I'm on LinkedIn. You can also email me on my work email. Um, So nadine.cowley at bunzelsafety.ca. Great. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take care, Pat. You too.